This is going to be another question and answer video about women's place in ministry. Someone asked a question about what is a woman's place in ministry? What can they do and is there anything that they can't do? Well, a lot of people think that a woman has no place doing anything. But in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 3, Paul says, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel. So they're doing a lot more than just washing dishes and making sandwiches and stuff for their husband. He says, help those women which labored with me in the gospel. Women obviously played a part in helping Paul with the gospel. And every Christian, no matter their gender, is responsible for getting the gospel out. A saved woman is responsible for giving the gospel to a lost man even. There is a belief out there that a Christian woman has no place in the ministry whatsoever. But according to verses like that, that just isn't true. And I've listened to pastors who even call out a woman in church just for saying amen. And they use 1 Corinthians 14 to teach that a woman has no place, you know, saying amen or anything like that during preaching or singing or something. In 1 Corinthians 14, 34 through 35, it says, Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So if you read the verses that were before and the verses after these two verses that I just read you, you can see that the context is speaking in tongues. Now, I've met women that believe this means they should not speak in church, period. And if they want to go by that rule, then that's fine. However, I believe these verses are teaching that a woman should have never spoken tongues in the church. Not speak, period. The thing a woman cannot do according to the Bible is hold one of the two offices. They can't be a pastor or a deacon. Which shouldn't really be that big of a deal because God didn't even make every man to be a pastor or a deacon. Now let's look at some good verses in 1 Timothy chapter 2 that will show a woman shouldn't be a pastor. In 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 10. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered, broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Notice they profess godliness. They can be vocal about it. It says in verse 11, Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Going by the context, this is in the marriage. And notice in 13 through 14, it talks about the first marriage, Adam and Eve. So I don't believe the verse teaches a woman just can't speak during church or something. But it says in verse 12, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So this is why a woman can't pastor. If she were to pastor, then she would have authority over the man, her own husband. That goes backwards from what God shows us in the Bible. And I think the average female Bible believer would think that it's backwards for her to be up there as a pastor teaching her own husband and having, you know, authority over him in that way. They would have to admit that that is backwards. That's just strange. Can you imagine, you know, you're up there preaching as a woman and your husband's down there sitting next to your purse and saying amen, sweetheart, and all that stuff. But that's why a woman can't pastor. She, if she were to pastor, then she would have authority over the man, which is her own husband. And that just goes backwards from what the Bible says. And it says in verse 13 and 14, For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Ever since Eve sinned, the woman has been more prone to deception. And uh, Peter calls the woman the weaker vessel. The devil approached Eve when Adam wasn't around. He went after the person he thought he would be more easily he, he could more easily seduce. 
In 1 Timothy 2.15, it says, Not, Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So, saved in childbearing, that's not saved as in having your soul saved. That's saved as in, as in saved from deception, going by the context. Looking at verse 14, talks about deception. She's going to be saved in childbearing. You see, when a woman is bearing a child and going through uh, that time that a woman goes through every month, she has changes going on where she is more likely to be deceived. And she can be safe through those things if her and her husband continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. And it's the man's job to lead the home and instruct his wife spiritually and to make sure that she is not being deceived. Unfortunately, today, in most Christian marriages, the man is a lazy bum. All he cares about is hunting and fishing and sports and his job. He has no appetite for the things of God whatsoever. It's a joke. Uh, being around, I'd say, 99% of men that are much older than me, they have absolutely no idea what's in the Bible. I mean, you can sit down and talk to them, and you could say, what's your favorite book in the Bible? And they would say, book of the Bible? I thought it was just one book. They don't even know it's a book made up of 66 books. Completely ignorant of what the Bible says. They're 60-something years old. They have no idea. What have they done with all their time? They've obviously not led their wife and their children, spiritually speaking. So you can see why the woman would, would feel the need to have to step up spiritually and be the spiritual leader in the home. But it's, it's the man's job to be the spiritual leader. But he, he's not stepping it up in most cases, and he hurts the marriage. And many times the woman knows much, much more about God than he does. She knows much more about the Bible than he does because he's so lazy and fleshy and stupid. But going on to the next point, if a woman is a pastor, then it doesn't reflect the clear type and illustration that God has laid out from the beginning of the Bible. It goes against the line of authority that God has made clear in the Scriptures. And this is the best reason, in my opinion. Ephesians 5, 22 and 23, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. So Jesus Christ is the head of the church, and the marriage is a type of Jesus Christ and his bride, the church, when the woman is in authority, this is like the church being in authority over Jesus Christ. That's completely backwards. If the husband and wife relationship represent Jesus Christ and his bride, the church, and the man representing Jesus, the woman representing the bride, the church, if, the, if you got the woman in the lead, in authority as a pastor, that goes against the illustration it goes against that clear picture that God's laid out in the Bible. In Ephesians 5.24, it says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. When the man's not willing to die for his wife, doesn't love her enough to die for, putting her before him, then he ruins the picture that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And men struggle with that because men are selfish, and they love their self more than they do their own kids. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. So you see how the Lord has a pattern. 
The pattern is the man is to lead the home. The woman follows his lead, just like Jesus Christ is the head of the church and we follow his lead. This can be hard to swallow for some women. And you shouldn't let this bother you because we are all following somebody. I have to follow people every day of my life. We are all in subjection to someone. There are men that I have to follow every day. I mean, I've had teachers, I've had supervisors, I've had police officers, and so on and so forth. We all follow somebody. Even your supervisor has a supervisor, and his supervisor has a supervisor. There has to be a line of authority. If you're a Christian, we're supposed to all follow the Lord. If there isn't an authority figure, then it's not good. And I'm well aware that the majority of men today are almost impossible to follow. And if you're a woman in that situation, you just have to do your best and pray about it. If all a man wants to do is play video games all day and it's hard to follow a man that acts like he's your son, I feel for you, you just got to pray about it and do your best at it. But you can't just use a deadbeat husband or the, the fact that men have lost their appetite for the Word of God to justify having a woman pastor. It doesn't reflect a type. And I know of a church where the pastor was out and there's plenty of men in the church, yet the men were so unspiritual, such spiritual babies, the person who subbed in for him was a woman in the church. So out of all those men, you're telling me, none of them have studied enough to get up there and, and in his place, they had to get a woman to do it. That's very sad. And that's a horrible example on the young men in the church. You know, they're going to grow up thinking that, you know, they don't have to know no more Bible than their wife does. You know, when you, if you're a woman and you, and you haven't got a husband yet, you should get a husband that knows the Bible better than you do. That way he can spiritually lead you. But unfortunately, men today have no interest in the Bible. You almost can't get them interested in the Bible. In 1 Corinthians 11.3, it says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So God's laid out a line of authority. The line of authority in your family should be the man, and, and hopefully he's going to lead his family right, spiritually. And then it's the woman and then the children. But God above all. You know, some, uh, a woman might ask, well, what if my husband just lives like the devil and tells me to do horrible things? Well, that's when you go, go to the Bible. The Bible says it's better to obey God rather than men. You know, if your husband tells you to do something that's wrong, you go against your husband and choose the Bible. But when your, when your husband tells you to do something that's not wrong, then you're supposed to do it. And the devil gets in your mind and tells you that, that that's awful because, you know, the, the world has trained women to think that if a man tells you what to do, then, then that's just the worst thing that could possibly happen for you and that you should have the say-so over him and all this stuff. So women shouldn't be pastors. They shouldn't be deacons. And this is all according to what Paul said. I mean, I didn't just make this up. I mean, if you're a Christian and you're going to believe the Bible, you just read or you just heard what I just read from the Bible about it. So how can you go against that and profess to be a Bible believer? This doesn't mean that a woman can't even talk in, during church. This doesn't mean they can't teach a Sunday school class for children and other women. This doesn't mean they can't teach the young women. Paul even says they should be teachers of good things. In Titus 2, 3 through 5, it says, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, in false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands. That's a big thing. Because you have all these older women going around telling all the young women, don't ever get married. You should never get married. You're gonna, you'll hate your, but just because they hate their husbands, they think everybody's gonna hate their husband. It's not those young women's fault that you married a deadbeat loser. You know, they may find 
a good husband to marry. But it says that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands. When a woman goes around bad-mouthing her husband to everybody, that's not teaching the young women to love their husbands. That's teaching them to bad-mouth their husbands. And then when you bad-mouth your husband, everybody around them lose con- loses confidence in them. And that's some confidence they may, may never gain back if they do decide to start living right. A woman might go and badmouth her husband to her parents. Then his in-laws lose all confidence in him. And then uh, his in-laws will come between him and his wife, and this hurts the marriage. But it says that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. And that's a need today. If you're a Christian woman, it would be a great thing if you could teach the young women to love their children, because they do not. They love themselves more than they love their own kids. They have unnatural affection. It says to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. Search that. So many times in the Bible, obedient to their own husbands. Well, what if your husband's mean or or, uh, telling you to do sinful things? Like I said, it's better to obey God than men. But if he's not telling you to do something that's wrong, you can win him over. It, Peter talks about how a man can be won by the chaste conversation of the wives. And it says, Obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Everybody's always worried about blasphemy. But what about this? I know this one woman who, who's always saying a person can't be saved because they've blasphemed the Holy Ghost, which I don't believe there's any sin you can do today that can keep you from being saved. But she believes that. But... She's always bad-mouthing her husband, and I always want to say, well, what about that verse that says, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed? She's blaspheming. She's always bad-mouthing her husband, telling him to move, to get out of the way, and all these things like that. And many times people will use examples of Deborah in Judges chapter 4 and verse 4. And Deborah was a judge and a prophetess, And they'll use this to say, well, see, this proves that a woman can pastor. But what does Judges 4.4 have to do with a woman being a pastor of a local New Testament church? Are you going to use Judges 4.4, take a verse from the Old Testament, a different time period, out of a book that says, where, where men were doing what was right in their own eyes and use that story and override the clear statement that Paul gave us right there in the Pauline epistles that says, uh, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man. How could a woman be a pastor without usurping authority over her own husband? That makes zero sense. And I think, I think the average woman especially a Bible-believing woman, would not want to have that type of authority over her husband anyway. Why would a woman want to get up there and preach to her husband and have that type of authority over her husband? That's completely backwards. That's, I I think that's completely backwards of, of how God wired women. I mean, the only reason they start believing that way is because they're trained to believe that way through TV Music, movies, older, old, bitter women that have had horrible relationships with men because they've chose the wrong men or because they've drove a man crazy till he's just been mean back to him. But I believe women definitely have a place in ministry. Because of that verse, Philippians 4, 3, it says, Help those women which labored with me in the gospel. I believe a woman can have part in ministry. I mean, women like uh, Gail Ripplinger has those great books about the King James Bible, defending the King James Bible, and things like that. A, a woman can do more than just staying at home and taking care of the kids and taking care of the husband so that he can be in the ministry. She can also have a place in the ministry as well, She just can't hold the office of a pastor or a deacon. But she's supposed to even preach the gospel to every creature. 
A woman can be out on the street, street, holding a sign, street preaching even, preaching the gospel to every creature that walks by. You know, that's not, that's not unbiblical because she's supposed to give the gospel out. And that's not her usurping authority over a man. That's her giving the gospel out. So I don't see anything. A lot of people think that that's wrong. I don't believe that's wrong. So this has been a quick question and answer about women's place in ministry. If anybody has any questions, send it to HensleyBibleBeliever at gmail.com and I will try to answer the question. And I may not get to it as fast as I would like to because I, sometimes I have a lot come in and I just go in order or sometimes they just get lost in in my email and I didn't even see it. So if I didn't answer your question, there's a chance I didn't even see it. 